Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and welcome to today's upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment and share the video. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. They are appreciated and they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's upload, shall we? All right, folks, tonight I have a guest that I've had on the show before. Um, many of you have heard him share experiences with us. His name's DJ. He is from the Tazewell region of Virginia. And that is, in my eyes, a hot spot. Buchanan, Tazewell, Mercer County, West Virginia. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of people that disappeared. And there's just multiple dogman experiences in that area. I've got at least six subscribers from that area. DJ is with us tonight and he's got some other interesting things that he just experienced. So DJ, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Jeff. Good, good talking to you. I'm glad that we got to catch up a little bit. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Um, so I'm going to turn the microphone over to you so you can fill in what what happened um i know that you i know that you were hurt during it so yes sir um anyhow i think that most of your subscribers or your new ones haven't heard a while back i told you that my uh, wife's relatives her uncle and her aunt where they live a few miles up the road from us on top of a mountain have previously had something that had left a stench around their house and had one of them a sighting she seen the aunt was doing dishes that evening after supper and she has a window like most people do in their houses right there's kitchen sink and she was looking up as she was washing and she seen a flash you know like needing to go by her window and it was taller than she was and it scared the crap out of her well she told her husband very good man he's a very good you know salt of the earth people so he went and bought them lights that you put up everywhere. And if it gets, you know, a motion detected, if it gets within, I like think, 25, 20 to 25 feet, they come on. Mm -hmm. They even put cameras, you know, all around the place, even up on the end of the driveway. Well, one evening, it's been going on for a couple of days. They had trouble. Something kept running their dog clean up into the carport, and a dog would cower and whimper and beg to come in. And this was going on repeatedly. Well, her husband, you know, he's your normal average person, and, you know, he's got a couple weapons, and he sat out there with one of these deer rifles trying to see what was going on and walking around the place investigate. And every time he went, he didn't see nothing. He sat out. He sat up there all the way up for three hours at night, trying to find something, see what was going on. But every time he exits the house, whatever is going on stops completely. So he just, you know, scratched it up. It's just the dog was scared of its own shadow. Well, one night he was out there, and they were well. Actually, they were canning is what they were doing, and they were picking stuff out of the garden right at the edge of dark. And the dog was, where would they go outside? The, you know, the little dog, it's a house dog. And uh, it goes in and out on its own wheel. And it was sitting there, I reckon, in between them, laying on the ground as they were picking the rest of your vegetables for the next day's uh, haul. So about that time, they heard something squeal. 
I mean, according to them, what they said, it sounds <laughs> like as way as the way her uncle put it, being scalded and having your skin ripped off at the same time, mixed with a bullhorn. Now that's the way he put it. I don't know what he was, you know, I understand basically what he was trying to describe, but he's 57 years old, and he said it made every hair go up on the back of his neck and his arm. He said he looked like he was growing feathers from a hair stick out that scared him so bad. Wow. The, his wife grabbed the dog and ran to the house immediately. Well, he called me to try to help him to see what it was, so. Of course, you know, they're good people. I, you know, get in the automobile and try the fair to see what try to If I could possibly do anything to help ease their minds and make them rest better at night and where the dog ain't afraid because they don't have any children and that dog is basically their child, especially his wife. So, you know, of course, I, I take a weapon, but just a sidearm because I don't think I'm going to see nothing. But it's better to have, you know, it's better to have it and need it. It's needed and not have it. So I go up there. And he tells me what he wants to do. So every 10, 15 minutes, he'll get on. We get up as we're talking. We're sitting on the patio talking. He goes on one side and I go on the other. And we completely walk around the house, the garage, the barn, and the little pasture there where they used to have horses and sheep extensive. And we do this for at least two hours and nothing happens. And all of a sudden, he hears something start running and i'm with him too and it sounded a ways off but it sounded just like something normally right i fear the deer the hell lot deer up there mm-hmm. but he said he swears up and down mm-hmm. you know that he sat up there countless evenings with his wife and he said he knows the sound of a deer running up there different from the way it is he said to him it sounded like a horse running twice as fast and so you know i honor him and we walk up through the woods there and he wants to stay, he wants me to be in the edge of the woods, and he wants to be down there sitting on a patio. It's a straight line between the place he's wanting me to sit, between there and the end of his patio, right there where his garage is. So I honor him, and I go up there, and I sit against a tree. And I'm up there, I guess, for 45 minutes, sitting in the pure dark now. All I have is a headlamp and a sidearm and a knife in my pocket. And I'm an old BDUs, beat up, told camouflage BDUs that they'd be better off with old ragged for pants. And all of a sudden, I hear him start hollering, and the dogs start yelping. Well, he, 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 I hear him hit the house, and I hear him squall my name. And at that time, I hear something coming right up through the edge of the woods, so, but it, it's, it's in low line brush, probably up past my waist, and I'm 6'1. And it, what it does is it goes along the fence line and it cuts up and it follows the fence. Then it somehow it managed to catch on an old down tree. It started out as poison ivy, but it just growed into sumac and everything else. You know, I, you can't even see nothing through this. And I'm sitting there and it almost just completely encircles the tree that I'm sitting against. And I'm just sitting there wondering what's going on. And finally it gets to where I'm at. And I mean, this thing is moving so fast, but for what, whatever limb or weed it touches, you know, to make it move, it's already gone 10 yards past that before the actual motion of it shaking the top of the weed. I mean, this thing is super fast, but I cannot see nothing. And it starts to bother me. And then as it's running, I hear a deep breather. The clay, every time it goes by me, I mean, it's like it's running like a, a rabbit for a greyhound in a circle right around me and I'm standing in the center stuck as the web, you know, as the tool that can't be used. Yeah. And I start hearing breathing and every time it goes by me and it's like breathing, it sounds like a horse with a really deep breath. And then the more it does this, I hear a growl. Then it starts to slow down and it gets to a point right, I'd say less than 20 yards from the tree, there's a break in the foliage, and it stopped right before, uh, probably two feet before that break is. And then as it stops, I'm looking all around, you know, I got the headlamp on low, so I don't try to frighten anything if I see it. And as it finally starts moving toward the open, I see a flash that But 
it's not normal. These eyes, I, it's hard to describe. I, they return light, but at the same time, it's not a normal eye. It almost reminds you of something like a, a half of a, a frog. Big, solid, black, and shiny. It's just basically like a gap right there. It's like an empty hole or something in the middle with reflecting light. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it, it stopped right there because of the light called. Then it started growling. And then it started running real quick past the opening. And all I could see was I said,
Always great talking with DJ. DJ had made a statement about he having multiple interactions with these creatures and wondering why. And I said it briefly that Brad had made mention of pheromones, a government agent who had stopped Brad in the woods one time had said that to him. Donald Coleman had actually said it to me in an interview a couple years ago that he's had numerous experiences. He lives uh, in the Lake Pickwick area, which is in the LBL area as well. But he feels that, and he was told, I forget by who, that um, genetically, he like his genetic disposition or whatever would attract these these creatures uh with dj though i think it's where dj lives taswell buchanan mercer county west virginia it all sits on this kind of um, dark area this really depression area and there was a lot of depression 50 years ago when the mines closed a lot of drug addiction, unfortunately. And the government really went in there and took what they wanted and, and just left the people in ruins. And I think that these creatures and this kind of evil is attracted to that kind of just dark depression. Um, because you tend to hear a lot of these experiences with people who have had addiction. I've said this for years now and just being not content with themselves, you know, not feeling good mentally. So, uh, tonight's or today's second half, um, I want to go over some video that I went through the other night and we'll get into that right now. So the other day I had gotten an email and a person had checked out the footage that I had put together up where Tom Mezek disappeared. And one, I want to clarify something. The day of the eclipse, um, that is not an owl. All right. I've, when I shared this originally on that day of that video, I had brought it to Cornell Cooperative Extension. And if you, Many New Yorkers, upstate New Yorkers, Adirondackers know what that is, but um, people who don't live in this area don't. It's um, a kind of community enrichment uh, nature program put on by park rangers um, and SUNY colleges and such for educational purposes. And um, there's at least two to three park rangers at the area at all times. And I had brought the footage with me to, to show uh, this park ranger. Because I, I thought maybe, you know, it, it could be an owl. Does it sound like an owl? No, it does, but it doesn't, you know. And I played it for him. And he said, out of the five to six owls we have native to our state, and especially the upstate, that that is not an owl. Um, he said it, it sounds similar, but in his exact words was, it sounds like something's trying to mimic an owl and an owl. Yes, they are, uh, primarily nocturnal, but they do move around in the daytime very seldom and especially, uh, going away. You could tell that it is moving away from me after blowing the shofar but in the video that i'm going to share quickly at about the 10 to 12 minute mark something is behind me in the woods i had just caught that metallic noise and i spin the camera around and as i'm spinning it around you can see it for a brief, brief second, and then when I have it turned all the way around, uh, showing you guys more of the uh, 
woods that you can then you see it move behind a couple of trees and it stays there and watches me and i didn't hear anything in the snow that day i did not hear any crunching of the snow any stick snapping just the wind and that metallic noise so check out the video all right so we're coming up to it All right, so we're coming up to it. 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 All right, guys, we're back. Back in Horicon, New York, where Tom Mezik disappeared. One of my favorite places, actually, to be. Um, even though I had a scare just the other last time I was here uh, but there seems to be some noise today and um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be going up this trail just to kind of spend some time here uh, see if we can catch anything hopefully we don't but <clears throat> I'll uh Spin the camera around so you guys can see whereabouts I'm at and uh, just talk a little bit and then we'll get to a spot and I got some encounters to share with you guys. Hang on one second. All right, so the camera is spun around and that is what is in front of me. That is what is aside of me. It's funny, last time I was here, I read in the comment section, a guy's like, there's a bunch of trees that are cut down. There are no trees that are cut down. This is broken limbs, broken trees. But you can't make everyone happy, right? I guess that's the thing. That's pretty cool. But I am glad that there is some noise today. Most definitely. So, find a location and uh, kind of, like that's, I'm flat, that's the incline, and it is beautiful out, it's not humid, absolutely gorgeous today. <clears throat> There's the trail that I came down through. <sighs> Absolutely gorgeous here. So, last time I was here, I caught something running across the Across the uh, trails. I don't know what that was. It scared me pretty badly. Whew. Getting winded here. Absolutely gorgeous. Just a beautiful location. It did kind of silence out though, a little bit. But, oh well. Let's uh, set up and, like that's the mountain right here. I'm on the mountain. 
All right. I just want to kind of give a look-see. I don't see anything around me. But we'll set up and uh, narrate a couple encounters and uh, just take a walk. How's that sound, guys? All right, guys. Today's first subscriber submitted experience is from a former or marine uh, I guess once you're a marine you're never not a marine um, which is always I've always thought that was really cool you know because you have then dedicated your life to that division of service you know um really cool so anyway <clears throat> jeff i'm 53 years old when i was 18 i joined the marine reserve straight out of high school combat engineer and bulk fuel specialist deployed in the first gulf war and now a disabled veteran my dad was a two-tour Vietnam vet with the 101st Airborne Rangers, 20-year veteran. I grew up fishing very young. My dad and I used to go hard to get to the fishing spots. I was about seven years old. In Yakima, Washington, my dad was stationed there for a few years. We'd gone fishing at our favorite spot. My dad had gone around the lake and I stayed near the car. We're out of here. We're out of here. What the fuck was that? Well, I'm back at my car. There's nobody here. Dude, that was beyond, like, I'm shaking. It just took me at least 10 minutes to run down that mountain. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you where everything went by. So there's nobody at this parking spot. Nobody, that's my car. Whatever, knock that tree down. It was up in here somewhere. I don't care if anyone calls me a coward, man. I saw something. I don't know what that was, but you guys saw me. I was narrating that. I'm not going back up there today. I'm going home. My chest hurts. That was unbelievable. I don't think I've ever been that scared. That was more scary than what occurred the other day when I caught whatever ran across the trail. I don't know if you guys can see right there there's that orange tag in the on that one tree those are tags that they use to grid this area off to search for Tom Mezik <sighs> holy cow I've only been here for 20 minutes all right I'm sorry guys I can't stay here today I am I am just way beyond freaked out And now, it was silent for a few minutes, so if you think about it, well, I was narrating, and now once that happened, now you hear a bird. But I'm also about an eighth of a mile away. All right, guys. We are in upstate New York in the Adirondacks. Snow is on the ground. <sighs> In today's video, I said I would be doing the shofar from where Tom Mezzett disappeared. 
and that's where we are. Never been here this late in the year. I'll uh, spin the camera around so you guys can check it out. It's pretty cold. It's uh, 31, I think. And uh, just real quiet. So I'll turn the camera around so you guys can see everything. All right, so as you can see, we had a snowfall on a, was it Tuesday? We got six inches of snow, but then it was 40. Wednesday and Thursday. What the hell's that noise? You guys hear that? It's coming from that way. Hang on. There's a noise coming from that way. I don't know if you guys can hear it. This weird, honestly, metallic sound. I don't know what it is. Not a clue. Kind of want to stay here for a second and see if we can hear it again. It's, did you hear it? What the hell is that? I hope my mic can pick that up. Dude, it's dead quiet here. Something's up here with me. I can tell and I'm not making shit up. It's coming from that way. I don't know if we can hear it. Hear it? go up a little and see. Whoa. Yeah, it's slick. There's some kind of noise over here on this side of me. I'm, I'm pretty sketched out because of that. I've never heard anything like that. There it is again. What the hell? I hope my mic is picking this up. This up. Here's where, right here's our rocks where we were sitting. This is the location that I set that trail cam up. You hear it? It almost sounds like, that's not a tree moving in the wind. That's like a metallic 
I almost don't want to blow the shofar here. <laughs> but you know what? I said I would do it. And I do what I say I'm going to do. So, well, there it is. And it's got like this faint. Alright, I'm going to get the shofar out. Blow it. We'll hang out for a few minutes and then I'm out of here. I do not like being here right now. Cold. Cannot believe I said I was doing this today. There it is. There's that noise again. Yeah. So, this is a shofar. That right there was a tree. Whatever is over there, I don't know what the hell is. I really hope nothing comes and <laughs> just attacks me. Alright, here we go. Dude, the wind stopped. Literally, the wind stopped. <laughs> no wind. Weird is that? Dude, that is crazy. It's actually 28 degrees now. Whew. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Just dead silence. <sighs> Wish it was warmer today. I do a pan around. Behind me is, there it is, that noise again. I really hope my mic picks that up. I'm about 20 minutes from my car. I don't know. I think it's just time to leave. I wanted to... Dude, it went dead quiet. There's that noise again. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm out of here. That's not a tree. We know what trees sound like. Trees don't sound like a metallic sound. I'm going to get the f out of here right now. I'll talk to you guys later. Look at that. That's interesting. That's, my hand is extended. I'm six foot. My arm would put me at seven foot. That thing is eight foot and bat.
that's where I want to go up in here. A woodpecker in there. Hear him? So this is where I was. I'm walking just like I am now. I stop and I look and I'm like, let's go this way. And I do. And I mean, this is not, there's no trail here. Why did I get pushed this way? Woodpecker's still right up in there. Let's do this, guys. As long as I can hear that woodpecker, I feel like I'm safe. But, there's no trail. I don't think the rattler snakes will be out this time of year either. This wall freaks me out too. There he is. Oh, look how big he is. Hang on. See him? There's that woodpecker. He's a big guy. Wow. Huh. That's so cool. Get to a different vantage point. Okay, I hiked a little bit more through the woods, but <clears throat> these are the three whew, rocks that I found one day. And to be honest, there is a side-by-side -side on the trails down that way. A ranger maybe. I don't know. Hear that woodpecker though? He's going top notch. <laughs> See if I can find him again. Can hear him. Can't see him. What time is it? <clears throat> Two fifteen. All right. So this is what I wanted to do. I've check this area with a magnet before. I want to use the dowsing rods here. Okay, so 
and we got an airplane overhead and a little woodpecker friend. All right. Is there any kind of entity here at all? Anything. Cross these things. Cross the rods. Wow. I thought for sure they'd work up here. Holy shit. Are you an old spirit? Open these up if you are Tom Mezik. Open them up if you're a Native American that lived in the Adirondacks. Alright. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to do that up here. I know this has a weird feeling up here. I'm a little nervous about being here right now. So, and I know they, our little buddy over here is packing away, but I'd rather be on the trail than up here <clears throat> during the eclipse. So I think what we'll do is we'll head out and head down and uh, head back up on the trails. How's that sound? Whew. Behind you guys, right? Like right where the camera is set up. There's a uh, just a rock outcropping. I think I found a pretty good spot to set up while the eclipse happens. I had to check on my daughter in a minute call her and see if she's okay. Here we go. What the fuck was that? Guys, I don't know what that was. Did you hear it? Something responded. Those are all woods back there. It's all woods. Deep. Back there. Something fucking responded. It's calling. What the fuck is it? I'm gonna blow it again. It sounds like it's getting closer or further away, maybe, I don't know. Hang on. Let's see. plane overhead.
I don't know, whatever it was, it communicated with us twice. And actually, where it sounded like it was coming from was It's getting further away. I just heard it. It's going further into the mountains. What the fuck was that? All right. So something that I was thinking about after uh, looking into that more and wondering why I didn't hear anything because I've never heard any walking or any kind of footsteps while I was up there. And during my kind of documentary into the Mesic case where I interviewed uh, the under sheriff responsible for the case, a park ranger, the uh, town of Horkin supervisor and the fire chief and his wife, they were especially important because they were responsible for the search and rescue party. Uh, it, that, that fire station in Brant Lake, New York, is, was the um, central area for all of the search and rescue. And if anyone would have any information, it would be them. Um, so... When I interviewed the one store owner, there's one store in Brant Lake and it's just this kind of you buy all, you know, they sell sodas, cigarettes, uh, t-shirts, knickknacks, whatever. And the lady told me about her and her two kids and her husband walking down Lily Pond Road. They will not step foot. This was before Mesic disappeared. They will not step foot in that area and a majority of locals will not the majority is uh, the majority of the locals in that area will not go down lily pond road um even teenagers like going down to you know they'll find a different area to go park and smoke their weed do whatever <clears throat> but she's walking and she notices this black entity that's just dark entity and it's moving uh it is just hovering above the ground and it walks in front of the the kids her her husband and goes into the other side of the woods she noticed it first and then everyone noticed it and then they quickly left the area but it did not make a sound and it went right in front of them so it came from the woods crossed over lily pond road which is just this old washed out fire road uh, best way to describe it and into the woods again on the other side and uh not not a sound not a crunch, nothing. So is there uh, some sort of darkness in the Adirondacks too? I think so. I really do. Especially since no article of clothing, no firearm, uh, walkie talkie, nothing was found. And Tom taught survival skills. So he'd know to sit. And they, they searched five square miles. Every inch of that five square miles was touched. And not, not hide nor hair. Just insane. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going. And what gives folks like us a place, to chan a place and a chance to share our experiences and theories judgment-free. 
simply treated with the respect we all deserve. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. These events are real. They've happened. It's dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.